man as y'all can see i'm not matching y'all can see there we go i am not matching y'all <laughs> i am not matching my allergies are really bad today too um i need to go find my old beautician that i had before i left here and reconnect back with her and have her hook me up because i need touch up I don't know why I'm getting bumps. I'm eating the right food. Maybe my body is just pushing some toxins out. But um, I'm just trying to get get my uh, life back going here. Like, to be quite honest, I don't feel good about none of this. Like, I'm going to share something with y'all that that I really don't want to share, but I'm sharing it because um, I think it's just important for people that may come across this video to know is that um, there are a lot of people in my same or similar situation. And, um, you're, you know, I'm in this situation, but people who feel like they're alone, they're, you know, you're not alone. And um, to make a long story short, I came back to the Bay because um, I was going to get a place with my spouse, but then something dawned on me. He, before I tried to go to Bossier City and work things out with him, um, before I did that, I was in Austin in these hotels and my money ran out and I got sick with my IBS. So I had to come, I had to go somewhere to get my health back right and to um, focus on trying to, uh, you know, get things straightened out as far as stability goes. Um, and my spouse told me that he was going to make his adjustments. He was going to, you know, help out and change and, and do his part, something that he hasn't been doing. Um, but all he has shown me is he's doing the same things that he's been doing. He has not made any changes or any adjustments. All he did was gloss over the problems, like try to like try to bribe me with a ring and try to um like take me on movie dates to make me make me feel good but never really dealt with the core problems the core issues and um you know we were supposed to get this place together in Bo in Shreveport and um when it came down to coming up with the deposit to pay for the place to secure it or whatever, it was going to be my hard, hard earned money that I worked for that I saved up. It wasn't going to be no money that came out of his pocket at all. Like, I know I'm not trying to be petty or, um, like I'm not trying to like be like nitty gritty about it. But the truth is, is this person took advantage of my kindness for his weakness. Like he took advantage of the fact that I love him and care about him. He took advantage of that. And um, for so many years, I've been the person paying majority of the bills. A lot of the pressure financially has been on me and weight has been on me. Um, I basically carried the five of us. I carry our three children and, and, um, and us. And um, so what he told me he was going to do was he was going to chip in more and do his part more in that department to, to help me out and to help us out, to help out our family. And um, he didn't do that. Like he was doing the same things he was doing prior, like the same things that he told me that he was going to change. He did not change. And instead of him taking some money to help put toward the deposit, he was just going to sit there and let me pay the full deposit, which was like selfish and immature and like, all of those things, you know, like, and they're responsible too, because how you gonna let your woman pay for the deposit for y'all's place that y'all are getting together rather than you, rather than you chipping in and putting some, some money in there to help out, like, and then he took some money, he put it in the savings, trying to lead me to believe that he was saving money, but he really wasn't, because as soon as he put the money in savings, he would spend it, and then, um, 
So that part really got to me. And then when him and I got into an argument over my son telling him to shut up, um, he started bringing up old things in our recent past and just bringing things up, trying to make a point that I always called the cops on him, which is not true. I only called the cops on him twice in our marriage. That was once when him and I got into it um, about something real small. Um, it had to do with me working a new job and I had training and he wanted me to take our younger son to the doctor and I couldn't skip training on a job I just landed. Um, so that was the one incident I called the cops because he grabbed my arm and left a bruise. And then the other time I called the cops is when our children were very small and we were way younger and um, he did something and I called the cops. Um, but to make a long story short, he tried to make it seem like I always called the cops on him. He brought up the scratches on my son's neck. Um, he brought up all these like things. And I was like, there was many times I could have called the cops and I didn't. Um, but the but the fact that you bring in all of this stuff up, it just shows your immaturity. It shows your your disrespect to your own woman, your own household, and in your own your own kids. Like, and then his mother and sister chimed in and put in their little two cent or whatever. And I just felt like you know like I was I was being like teamed up on and ganged up on because you know of course his people is gonna have his back and back him. And even if he is in a wrong, they still going to back him and, and and make it seem like he, he ain't doing no wrong when we all know he's doing wrong. And um, so once he did that, like once he got an attitude with me over um, my son telling him to shut up, which is something I felt like if he wanted to address it, he could have pulled me to the side. He didn't have to get no attitude with me about it. He didn't have to treat me foul about it. Like he, he treated me foul. He got a pissy attitude with me. He totally disrespected me. Um, that's what he did instead of just pulling me to the side and actually having a conversation with me about it. Him and I could have dealt with the situation in a totally different way. Him and I could have went about it a totally different way, but he decided to go be childish about it and be a 16 year old about it. And that's how he handled the situation. Things escalated out of control. One person said one thing, the other one said another. We ended up into this argument. His mother and sister got involved. Things just got real ugly real fast. So it dawned on me that I was going to be paying for this deposit to move us in a place that was supposed to be ours. And he didn't, he wasn't going to be chipping in to get us moved in. But yet you standing outside and you disrespecting me and you fronting me off, you bad mouthing my son. Instead of you pulling me to the side and having a conversation and you allow your people to get involved. And this is not even their business. Like it just dawned on me. You don't respect me. And then you about to turn around and use me to get a place that you call an our place, but really it's gonna be my place and I'm really gonna be paying for it. That makes no sense. So then I was like, you know what? I don't want that. I don't wanna rebuild a home with that type of energy. I don't wanna re rebuild a home and there's still major core problems there. And I don't wanna rebuild a home with somebody who's constantly using me. And then after they're, they're done using me, they still disrespect me. I don't want that. I realized it at that very moment when we had that argument in front of his mother and sister that I don't want that. I don't want I don't want that kind of life. I don't want to rebuild a home with that type of energy. I don't want to keep going forward with somebody who's not making a change, who's not trying to do right by me or the kids, who keep making selfish and irresponsible decisions and it and it, and it affecting our household, it, it it affecting our relationship and marriage and also respect reflect, affecting our kids. It dawned on me, I just didn't want to keep doing that no more. I just, and I just felt like something had to give and something needs to change. Something needs to be different. Um, so now here I am back in a bay, a place I said I don't want to come back to, but I don't have any family in Austin, Texas. I have family here in the Bay Area in California. So I came back to a place where I know I have family who can actually help me get on my feet. Go back to Texas, there's no help there. There's no, there's no kind of nothing to help me get on my feet so I have to come back here to get on my feet now I'm just doing what I gotta do to get things right make ends meet trying to get my son to finish high school and then after that you know we the sky's the limit really from there um but I wanted to share my story to make people out there understand that just because things seem bleak, just because things are not going your way, doesn't mean God is not in your corner. This is all just a process. It's all a test. And at the end of the day, there's more to come. 
there's more positivity to come than you think. You just have to, you know, you have to stay the course and you have to just go through the process. Like right now, I feel like crap. I feel like shit. I'm depressed because my other two children are still in Louisiana over there with them. And um, I really wanted to bring my other two kids with me, but I just knew that was an irresponsible decision to just drag them along just because I'm in my feelings. Um, they're more stable over there than them just coming with me with no place to, to live of my own. Um, so I just let them stay there. And that was a hard decision for me to make as a parent because I really love my kids and I didn't want them to feel like I was just leaving them because I don't love them or because I don't care about them. But when things get better and when they get older, they will understand because um, I will explain it to them. Um, but I did speak to them the other day. They seem to be doing okay. My son was really sad. Um, so I just tried the best way I could to cheer him up, you know. Um, but yeah, this is the situation I'm in and this is where I'm at. And it's just sad because I was constantly carrying us and taking care of us. I was constantly paying most of the bills, um, if not all the bills. And this is the position that I'm left in is this, this man takes my kids from me and he takes them and he go gives, he goes and gives my children to his mother and sister who, um, who I feel like shouldn't have the right to have them. Those are my children. And, 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 and then, and then he don't do nothing to elevate himself to, to, to better our situation. He don't do nothing to elevate himself so that, um, we can be better parents. All he's constantly doing is taking from me, sucking the life and energy out of me. And then when he gets around his people, he tries to make it seem like I'm being a bitch or that, um, or that, um, I'm heartless or, or that, um, I'm a, I'm an unfit parent. And, and, and then it, from his mother's perspective, he's playing into, he's forcing our situation to play into her hands and play into her perspective of things. See, she think I'm irresponsible. That's what she says. You let her tell her story. She says I'm irresponsible, but how am I irresponsible if I'm working and I'm paying all the bills? How does that make me irresponsible? You know what I'm saying? How I, I just don't understand that if your son is dead weight, and, and your son is putting all this pressure on me and not helping me, not helping our family, not helping us. How am I being irresponsible? How is that my fault? I guess the only fault I have is the fact that I probably just married the wrong person. I didn't marry the right person um, to have a family with. I didn't pick the right person to, um, to, to have a union with. I didn't pick the right person to grow old with. I didn't pick the right person. So that's the only irresponsible thing that I've done in, in this entire situation is pick the wrong person. Um, truth be told, I'm just trying to get back on my feet. Um, the reason why I'm not on my feet is because he, this man has ruined my credit so much to the point that I can't even go apply for an apartment or a house without them looking into my credit and saying, Oh, your credit is not good enough. Um, so he's put me in that position. He's completely crippled me to the point where I can't even go apply for nothing right now and get approved. Every time I apply for something, I get denied all because of my credit. It has nothing to do with my income. My income meets the qualifications, but my credit doesn't. Um, and instead of them saying, well, we just want you to pay a bigger deposit. You can go ahead and still rent from us. Just pay a bigger deposit. No, they're actually saying, no, you don't qualify to rent from us at all. Stuff like that. Um, so that cripples me. It, it cripples me. So then I can't get a, a roof over my head. Um, I can't move forward. I have to lean on family um, until I can get on my feet. And it was sad is the condo we had in Austin. Um, it wasn't because we didn't pay our rent. We actually paid our rent till the end. And I think we was late maybe one or two times that whole entire lease. We was late maybe one or two times um, that entire 12 month span. And we got caught up and we paid everything we owed. And then... Um, the owner wanted to sell. So since the owner wanted to sell, we couldn't renew our lease. Um, and then that's when that big banger hit that I couldn't find no other place to live because no one else wanted to rent to me. Once we moved out of that condo, I couldn't I couldn't find no other place who was willing to rent to me. And so that's when that's when all this whole thing just came crashing down is um I can't get a place to live. My credit is not decent. So I'm working on that as we speak. It's a work in progress. I'm working on trying to repair my credit. But in the meantime, I have to just be patient and wait for those numbers to go up. So that way, um, when the numbers are up, I can actually start applying and get me a place. Um, 
right now I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. I'm upset. I'm hurt. I'm angry. I'm a little depressed. Um, I'm just trying to keep things staying afloat. I'm working remotely. Um, I'm just doing the best I can to get on my feet. And um, there you have it. Well, this is the end of the video. Um, I hope this helps someone out there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.